Now, a number of deaths allegedly linked to e-cigarettes in the United States has led to concern over the safety of vaping. So today the industry is launching a campaign to try to reassure millions of vapers in the UK that it's a safe alternative to smoking. Here's Breakfast Graham Satchel. Milwaukee's health department issued an alert telling people to stop using those e-cigarettes immediately. It's being described in America as an epidemic. That's now 27 deaths linked to vaping in 22 states. Every day, a new report of someone dying or being hospitalized. This is the illicit market for THC vape oil. This undercover report shows why. Backstreet stalls selling fluid laced with cannabis. Guaranteed to not kill you. <laughs> Most of the reported deaths have been linked to vaping unregulated, homemade cannabis oil. And the panic now gripping America has prompted the UK vaping industry to act. Today, they've started a print campaign in national newspapers. It says, what's happening in America couldn't happen here because the UK industry is tightly regulated. We feel that it's really important that um, the general public and vapors can be reassured that the products they're buying here in the UK are safe to consume and that they're dealing with facts and not fiction. Vaping in the UK is controlled by an EU directive. All liquids have to be tested and registered. There are restrictions on advertising and selling to under 18s. But as time goes on, there are also scientific studies starting to suggest that vaping can cause some damage. Can you guarantee that if someone is vaping in the UK that they'll be safe? What I can guarantee that if you, you're using vaping to get off smoking, that it's far less harmful for you to vape than it is to smoke. But nothing that we do in this world is 100% safe. So this is your husband? Yeah, this is Terry. Glynis's husband was 57 when he died in 2010. He'd smoked since he was 15, but in the last year of his life, he switched to vaping. He became ill and was admitted to hospital. Doctors discovered oil on his lungs. He was diagnosed with lipoid pneumonia. His lungs obviously were damaged through the smoking, but using the e-cigarette, he was very susceptible to pick up other things. And I think that was, how can I put it, the straw that brought the camels back as far as like, um, so yes, in effect, at the end of the day, it was the oil, the e-cigarette that done it. it. It killed him. An inquest into Terry's death recorded an open verdict, and there's no evidence vaping directly caused his pneumonia. But Glynis remains deeply suspicious of e-cigarettes. If people want to stop smoking, use another method. Use the, the patches, use the lozenges, use the chewing gum. Don't go on to e-cigarettes because we just don't know the long-term effect. There is now scientific consensus that vaping is less harmful than smoking, but the jury is out on the long-term effects of using e-cigarettes. Graeme Satchel, BBC News. We can talk now to Marketing Dockrell from Public Health England, who joins us now from our Edinburgh newsroom. Thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Um, I suppose, the, you know, people are now asking when they see all these reports in the US and they see, they see um, what's been happening, is vaping safe? Well, you can understand why people are in such a panic from the way the, the stories come across from the US. But as your clip made really clear, this is uh, not uh, an outbreak associated with uh, the regular kind of nicotine e-cigarettes, but more kind of um, e-joint cannabis vaping, which is, which is very different. So we've had about 26, 27 deaths from cannabis vaping in the US in the last couple of months. Um, we have uh, had no deaths at all associated with uh, re the regulated e-cigarette products that we have in the UK. About um, the more than 1,000 cases of a lung illness which has been linked mm. to vaping by US health authorities. Really, really serious, but linked to vaping cannabis uh, products. And, and that is a concern. Um, and it's uh, something that we're keeping under tight um, tight scrutiny here in the UK too. Well, to be fair, investigators haven't linked the illnesses to any particular product or compound. They did say vaping oils containing THC, which is the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana, poses a great risk, but they haven't linked it yet. Well, well they, what, what they have done is they've, uh, they see a very clear pattern of uh, who's at risk. And so right from the start, it was very clearly uh, young, men, largely men, uh, who uh, were reporting vaping 
uh, cannabis products. It d- yep. doesn't seem to be related to the yep. 9 million adult uh, US uh, vapors of, of nicotine products. So you can see that in, in some states it's 95% or, or more of the cases are associated with, you know, w- with biologically demonstrated uh, exposure to THC. So it, it, it really I, I, I really don't I really want to stress I really do want to stress that the Center for Disease Control Disease Control and Prevention the CDC has advised people and it hasn't made specific it's it has said it's not linked the illnesses to any particular product or compound and it has well, that, said that's quite right and it has advised so not just THC but it has advised people to stop using vaping products or e-cigarettes and this is the crucial bit regardless of whether they contain nicotine or marijuana that is the advice that uh, the CDC has given, absolutely. But uh, they've also reported uh, that, you know, that the overwhelming majority of people, and you can just, if you do a little search on, uh, on uh, the internet for CDC vaping, it'll take you straight to the CDC website and it'll show you the proportions of people who uh, have been exposed to THC. Now, it's quite right that we don't know that it's the THC that's causing the problem. It might be something else. It, pro- it could well be something else in the THC vaping, in the E joints. So uh, it might be, for example, something called vitamin E acetate, which seems to be uh, added to many of these products. Or it might be some other kind of contaminant that's got in in a, a rogue way. But this is a sudden out- outbreak in a very specific population. And it's really very different from the kind of uh, thing we're seeing in the UK. So it's really important in the UK to focus on the real risk. And the real risk is not in uh, nicotine containing e-cigarettes, regulated much more strictly in the UK than in the US. But the real risk in the US and the UK is uh, among people using these THC uh, vaping devices. Now, it might not be the THC that's causing the problem, but there's something in these THC devices that is causing the problem. In those, in the, in the number that was found in this country, there has been a small. Sorry, the, in the number that was found the, in this in country. In a small number, the seven or eight you said that were linked mm-hmm. to THC, not these thousands that were in the United States, which the CDC says I, sorry, isn't I, I, linked. I didn't say. I certainly didn't mean to say that any products were identified in this country. But that's right, there are a thousand cases in uh, the US where people who were overwhelmingly exposed to THC products have had this uh, lung disease. And that's very different from the situation in the UK and from uh, nicotine uh, e-cigarettes, which are regulated by our uh, medicines regulator, the MHRA. So it's much more tightly regulated in the UK than in the US. Okay, as the tobacco control lead for Public Health England, when you, um, and I imagine you are told about all, all um, studies that are, are of significance. There has been a small lab study where UK scientists found that vapour could lead to changes in the lung's immune cells. Mm. The fact is, isn't there, that there is a risk. There is some risk when it comes to smoking e-cigarettes. So to prom- for them to be promoted as a safe alternative to smoking cigarettes, well, perhaps always... isn't the wisest advice, is it? Tell me. We, we've always said that e-cigarettes are not completely safe but far, far safer than smoking. And so, you know, the BBC kindly sent uh, a cab to pick me up, to bring me to the studio this morning. That wasn't completely safe. Obviously, there are risks uh, in road traffic. But um, it's... So with e-cigarettes, not 100% safe. But remember, 28 cases, I think, of 28 deaths in the US. But in the UK, from smoking, 220 deaths every day. That's the scale of risk. 220 deaths from smoking every day. E-cigarettes are far, far less harmful. No deaths recorded in the UK uh, linked to uh, medicinally linked to the uh, regulated e- nicotine-containing e-cigarettes that are approved by the MHRA. So that's that's really reassuring. Those products are way, way safer. And you know, my advice to the British public is the same to my brothers and sisters and my nephews and nieces and all my friends who smoke. Way, way better to stop smoking completely. 50% of people, at least, who are lifelong smokers will die from smoking-related uh, illness. Martin. There's no, suggesting that, no suggestion that vaping nicotine is anything like that risky. Martin Dockrell, uh, Tobacco control, control Lead for Public Health England, thank you very much for talking to me on the programme. Pleasure.